Hey, what's going on, everybody? We're here. I'm Casty Haynes, owner of Bodyslam.net, and we're back with another installment of our special GCW Road to Hammerstein interview series. And I'm here with my buddy, my good friend, Kevin Gill, the voice of GCW. What's up, buddy? What up, though? What is really good, though? And thanks for having me up here on Bodyslam.net to promote the Road to Hammerstein. The road, we're almost oh, out of road, brother. You're it's on it. It's it. Your Dang. go home show was the other night, man. You had a big weekend this weekend, dude. So this is it. We're closing in, man. Unreal and much love to everyone in uh, Detroit and Chicago. Those those events were incredible, banana as they say back in the day. Yeah, man, that was that was fun, dude. You, we got we're like six days out now because it's Sunday, January twenty third, from the Hammerstein Ballroom. And man, like this card shaping up real nice too, buddy. Yeah, the card is a mind blower, man. Leave it to Brett Lauderdale, uh, the GCW, his the one man GCW championship committee and its elaborate processes and uh, vetting and double secret closed balloting and etc. Uh, it's put together an incredible card and, and a card that sold out an event that sold out without any of, of these big names being announced. You know what I mean? It sold out just on the name of, of GCW and on right. the GCW originals the gcw crew you know what i mean yeah i think uh there's only a few names that were entered even had the graphic up that when it went on sale we had what i think they maybe announced eddie other than just the originals you know what I mean? no matches were even put out yet just just a couple of promo pictures and stuff yeah so. i think they announced eddie kingston and the briscoes uh like maybe two hours before tickets sold out but like 90 percent of tickets had already yeah. sold which is insane to think about and that's off you know the the tony deppins the jimmy lloyds the alley catches you know and and so and so many more the matthew justices yeah, I, I was talking to you that night, actually, the, t the night the tickets were about to sell out. And I, <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, this is this is getting this happened a lot quicker than I thought. So I'm, I made sure to grab myself one. And I think I told you I was the fourth to last ticket. Yeah, I remember on Ticketmaster. I was like, dude, there was there's three left now when I got out of the room and bought. So I was whew, I was close. Yeah, there, but there was a live GCW space just monitoring it second by second until the and no one could sleep until the event was sold out. Yeah, it was like two thirty in the morning when I bought mine. So yeah, that was that was crazy. But I mean, you've been there since day one, right? You've been with GCW since the beginning. No, uh, no. GCW uh, started, you know, kind of out of the ashes well, of Jersey Championship Wrestling right. yeah. uh, by Brett Lauderdale and, and company. But uh, I started my first show with GCW was the original Joey Janela Spring Break. Okay, um, I had the opportunity to call a match on on that, and uh, that was how many years ago was that? That was, it was what year was the first one? Was it twenty? Or 2017? 17, okay. I think. Man, I'm bad with time. It all is okay. Catch I know. It's one down, one big blur. Yeah. So well, that's what's up. But yeah, um, what? so Hammerstein, that's the biggest thing for the company. So somebody that's been there as long as you have and has been is an intricate part of it, what does this mean to you, man, going to, going to Hammerstein? Man, uh, I mean, for me personally, it's like uh, the Hammerstein Ballroom, le you know, legendary, legendary, legendary uh, venue, a venue I've been to many times. I saw every ECW show that ran at Hammerstein. I've seen a lot of great concerts there, and it's just, you know, just iconic. And uh, what it means to wrestling and independent wrestling to me is unfathomable because it's unprecedented that an independent wrestling promotion with – or, or, like almost exclusively homegrown talent announced for a ticket on sale with no matches, no main event could sell out a, a building of that magnitude. And in doing so set in a, a Hammerstein ballroom attendance record, uh, you know, just through the ticket sales already confirm it. You know what I mean? Once the mm -hmm. final bell rings on, on a Sunday, it's a record. And that's mind blowing when you consider, uh, you know, new Japan pro wrestling's, uh, uh shows there uh ring of honor uh world wrestling entertainment etc um those are the companies that have essentially run there besides ecw and and to be in that uh in the same breath you know what i mean it, it's it's a very very interesting it's great and for gcw i think it's the ultimate validation of game changer wrestling the last outlaws you know as someone mm -hmm. once said i've seen a, a million gcw's come and go it'll never last but I don't know what they're looking at because I've had the the privilege of being around and involved in the wrestling industry for a long time uh, and been there for the heyday of ECW. And mm -hmm. uh, I've never seen anything like fucking GCW. You know what I mean? Because it's never, it's never been done on this level, on this magnitude 
to run internationally, to run nationally. And uh, with the, this type of audience response and engagement, you know what I'm saying? It's it's yeah. it's a testimonial to the fans, to the talent, and quite frankly, to Brad and, and Giancarlo and everybody that that's involved because it takes it takes a village to yeah. keep going and going and going. No, I agree. I, I I'm someone who was around during the heyday of ECW, and I think I made this comparison to you just in chats and text messages back and forth that this push to Hammerstein reminds me of like ECW's push to pay per view. You know, just because it's like that's the moment for them that things changed and it was uh, different. And this for you guys setting that venue and selling it out like now, like it's like the title of the show says, all eyes of the world are going to be on GCW. So it's, it's insane to, to what, think about. And the fact yeah. that it's it's broken through the barrier, another unprecedented barrier for an independent wrestling company is to not just air on a prestigious mm -hmm. and trusted partner like Fight TV, but to be on traditional uh, cable pay-per-view packages and stuff call your local cable provider uh but how great is that it just it opens the door to so many people and and just you know what i mean it, it's a, it's a, it's 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 also like a it's legitimizes it's a, it makes things seem even more legitimate to just the standard casual fan too to be like oh these guys are on pay-per-view like real pay-per-view right and, and if you look like at the lineup streaming Feed. Even yeah. if you're totally new to it, if you're a GCW fan, you know what's up. But if you're uh, on the fence or you've never seen the product, maybe you've never heard of the product, but you look at it and you're like, oh, shit, Matt Cardona and Chelsea Green and Jeff Jarrett and, you know, Joey Janela and Gringo Loco and, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. Bandito, you know what I'm saying? All of a sudden, other people cross over and then you're like, holy shit, the show is insane. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, this is it's something else, man. Hey, I'm flying up from North Carolina, so I'm, I'm hell yeah. It. History and will be made. Will you be in attendance for the Hall of Fame? I was getting ready to touch on that. I am. That's the plan. And I was going to talk to you about that. What uh, are you going to be there? I'm sure. Oh, you absolutely. Will. Yeah. So let's talk about that. What do you think about uh, about? So there's still some un, some things not to be announced yet. The uh, who's introducing. Who's who's left? Uh, the Smothers, Tracy Smothers. That's the one that hasn't yeah. been announced yet. Um but CM Punk introducing or inducting Prezak, that's huge. That's huge for you guys too. It's huge. And it's huge for Dave Prezak and, and Dave Prezak has been huge for wrestling. CM Punk is obviously huge for wrestling. And while CM Punk gets his accolades well-deserved, uh, Dave Prezak gets his accolades too, but on, on a different level. So I, I think it's, it's so important to spotlight and honor people like Dave Prezak who are geniuses of wrestling, who've contributed so much to wrestling and it's so important to give everyone their flowers while they're here. I'm, who better to, to induct them than CM Punk? And what an honor it is that, that CM Punk would make himself available. I mean, he's well known as someone who's not big on traveling. And, you know, it doesn't seem like he's super big on making appearances. Like he's not out mm -hmm. on the road every weekend, at, you know, doing signings. So and not that he's doing a signing here uh, by any means, but... Uh, just to appear to honor his friend and someone that he traveled the roads with and spent so much time collaborating with is to me, that's the magic of wrestling. That That's the pure magic love of the game and, and true honor and respect between friends and peers, you know? Right. Yeah. No, it's, it's going to be something else. And I think I'm looking forward to, uh, to Tracy Smothers thing. Cause he was, I was a big Tracy Smothers fan. Being Same. In the South. Uh, and I, I got to run into him a lot of times. I got to talk to him here, uh, do shows because I travel around and would do not just covering stuff, but I, you know, worked a little bit there as managing some of the boys there and not get to sit there and talk to Tracy Smothers. And that was always one of the most fun things to do. And he actually, the last time I saw him, uh, was at our Bobby Eat the Bobby Eaton uh, memorial show or benefit show that we ran before he passed away in 2019. We did it in 2019, so it was well before he passed away, but it was a, uh, just a way to honor Bobby before he got sick and before, so he can enjoy it, you know, and Tracy, was sure. there. he was supposed to wrestle, but Tracy was having his battle with uh, cancer real bad. He was just had an issue with that uh, at the time and he was struggling, but he was there and he hung out and he watched every match like he always does and talked sure. to everybody. And uh, yeah, but that, that yeah, was what, what a wonderful guy. Talk to him. I yeah, was privileged so. to to work with Tracy many, many times. I, I ref, I refereed some of his matches. I commentated on a lot of his matches um, I got to travel with him uh, here and there and just, you know, I, yeah. I could never say a bad word about Tracy Smothers. You know what I mean? Uh, just a, a God. Any, I don't know anybody that can really, you know? Yeah. I wish he was here, to, you know, to, to receive his 
award yeah. and induction in person because I know it would have meant a lot to him. It would have meant the world to him. You know what I mean? I'm sure he'll be feeling the love because the love, you know, that's what I think about too is how much love is going to be in the, the cutting room in New York City. You know what I mean? Oh, it's going to be, it's unfathomable because it's a who's who of um of in, of people being inducted and the inductors themselves, you know? Yeah, it's from top to bottom. It's going to be an event in its own right and something different too because, you know, usually GCW runs a couple of shows over the weekend and they have one that's their big feature. But this weekend, it's all about Hammerstein is all about the world on GCW, but this is your secondary pro like production. It's a GCW production, but not a wrestling show. Right. And I'm and, really looking forward to this, honestly. And it, it will air on Fight and on YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, as well, there are still some tickets available. So I recommend just Google, you know, Indie Wrestling Hall of Fame cutting room or whatever, and the ticket link will pop right up. But we'd love to have you there, uh, meaning everyone within the sound of my voice right now. We'd love to have you there in the room and feel the love. And shout out to Orange Crush and Paps Blue Ribbon and everybody that helps make stuff like this possible. And of course, oh, did I lose you, KG? Uh oh, there you go. Got hey. you back. Hey, that was only five seconds. We're good. <laughs> Got cool. you back. Did you lose um, my uh, what I was saying? Last thing I heard was Paps Blue Ribbon. Okay. Uh, did I get to say, for, oh, so you didn't hear me say for help in making it happen or whatever? That yeah, was about the last thing they got out. Yeah, thank you, Paps Blue, from, Paps Blue Ribbon for making it happen, and then then you froze. Oh, that's fine. But yeah, no, uh, speaking of Paps, so you guys are also doing a pre-show on Sunday that's uh, presented by Paps, right? We'll yes, it's, it's, it's a kickoff event. So what's the deal there? I haven't really looked too much into that. It's like an is an hour before? Is it like an hour? Yeah, before it's going to go on the air. At, uh, we're going to open doors at 6 p.m. Uh, the kickoff event will start at 7 p.m. promptly. And uh, I think it's going to redefine the standard for uh, kickoff events because I think, you know, in other words, if you have a ticket to Hammerstein, like don't be in the bar around the corner uh, at 7 p.m. You want to be in your yeah. seat. Yeah. Truly. <laughs> so they have uh, i think i saw there's gonna be like some special stuff and there's gonna be some matches too right and oh yeah there's gonna be and... there's gonna be some some colossal matches that's what's up now we'll get into the card in a second but there's been you know some ma matches that so i'm so some things have been i saw like so ricky morton I, i'm looking forward to seeing ricky morton at hammerstein because i saw the pit the graphic for him but his match hadn't been announced yet so that is something I can't wait to see because Ricky Morton like a, is a Southern boy down here. I rode around with Ricky with Chase, so sure. like, I just love this like resurgence of his career, especially here at the like this late in his career to see what yeah. he's able to do. And he, I think this is going to be big for him too. Yeah, he's so brilliant. Uh, you know, in ring, out of the ring, such a great guy to be around, and his passion and his love for wrestling is is why he's there doing it and going as hard as he goes. And if you look at uh, his peers and people from his generation or his era of wrestling, I mean, his era is timeless. They're all, they all are, but their most active and prominent eras, he's the one that can still go out and do it. You know what I mean? And that that speaks volumes about about him in every way. I mean, we saw this weekend that match they had with uh, Matt Cardona was that was a fun one. I mean, everything he does is is fun to watch, but I mean, it shows people. He's always proven people that he can still do it. You know, every time you see him, like a lot of times people are wondering, like, man, I didn't know Ricky Morton. I hear it all the time. Like, I didn't know Ricky Morton was still wrestling. I'm like, dude, he still wrestles all the time, like, like constantly. And right. And now to be, and he's come all around the country with Game Changer, but to then see him at the sold out Hammerstein, people are going to lose their minds. They're going to lose their minds, man. I can't wait for it. And I'm just excited to see what he's going to be doing. I don't like because it's not announced yet. So, I don't know. We don't know if he's going to have a singles match. He's going to be in a scramble. He's going to be doing some tag stuff. What Ricky's going to be doing. So like anything is possible. Anything is possible. There's a lot in of, the world on of, GCW. It's it's going to be a blast, man. But let's just touch on this card a little bit. It's shaping up really good. So we'll start with uh, the the, tri the trios match that's been announced. So we've got oh, Team Bandito versus Team Gringo. So we've got Bandito, ASF, and Laredo Kid taking on Gringo Loco. Erez and Demonic Flamita and dude, that's gonna. Holy I mean, shit. really, are are there six better luchadors on the continent? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I I would doubt it. I, yeah, I don't even know what to. Th I can't even imagine what these guys are gonna do, especially on with 
on such a big stage. Like everybody's going to be just showing out right there. And like, they're going to set the bar for everybody for the rest of the night, really, I think. <laughs> and yeah, just the and the, the team format to me is so exciting because you have uh, people like ASF and Laredo Kid who are very closely uh, linked with Gringo Loco. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And just that the chemistry those guys all have together. And, and again, the same of their uh, opponents. They all have that chemistry and background together. Uh, this is like... Uh, yeah, redefining. I think this is going to be a, a redefining of Lucha Libre 2022. You're going to see it at the Hammerstein Ballroom. Yeah, when, it's like a when worlds collide, but decades and decades later. Right, I agree. And yeah, I mean, I, I don't even know what to think about that. That's just something I can't wait to see. I'm going to be flipping out. You'll probably hear me screaming. <laughs> you're, going hear, you're going to hear me screaming at that one, man. I love Bandito. I've got I don't know if you can't help me see if I can. I think you can see. I got a bandito mask up there. Oh, nice. I got, bro, I got one right here. So, so like, talented, I'm, man. Like a geez, god. It's, a god it's going to be rain. awesome. It's going to How be great awesome was it to see Tony Depp and get, get the pin on him the other day? Dude, I got, speaking of Tony, that's my, that's my guy too, right here. Yes. My Tony. Yeah. Super talent. Super man. asshole, super talent. It's a dual edged sword. It is. I mean, that's okay. You kind of got to be an asshole to be good at things. Like, you, you get that. Like, yeah. how many great quarterbacks do you hear in the day that's like, man, he's so good, but he's a dick. You know, it's like, well, right. Well, you know? sometimes you got to be a dick to be on top of your game. Exactly. You know I mean, if other people are slacking, uh, and Bandito was slacking, and it only took three seconds of slacking all to uh, lose to the the gatekeeper Tony Deppen. Dude, I I'm a huge Tony Deppen fan, and we're supposed to. Be, man, Got an interview scheduled with him at some point. We got to make it up. He uh, the flight the other day. Had some yes, he's on Friday. On Friday he was a little late landing, so we didn't get to record it. But then and then, of course, you know the weekend got busy, and then I saw all that stuff he had flying out. So we'll get me and him. Too. Tony and I rode to the airport together on uh, Sunday, and once we got through security, his flight got canceled, and mine. I saw that. I had the luck of the draw. Mine didn't. AJ Gray's flight was delayed like numerous hours. I think it got canceled. Oh man! Oh, ultimately, yeah, yeah, it's so, tough, yeah. man. I, I've uh, been very lucky so far in the airplane lottery in this thousands and thousands of cancellations. But obviously, knock on wood, hopefully I can keep the streak alive. Yeah, this weekend looked bad. I was actually going to travel down to Atlanta this weekend to watch some of those um, the Terminus and Zicky's uh, Independence. But I was like, sure, no, I don't think with the weather coming through, I don't think that's a good idea. So I got. Like I got snowed up here in the house instead. We got 20 inches of snow. I was telling you earlier. That's so I've insane. been stuck here for three days, man. But that's insane. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah that snow wreaked havoc on, on shows all over the country, just, you know, especially with Atlanta being such a yeah. travel hub. Uh huh. I saw Emil and Big Ben and everybody driving back east from, uh, I guess, Chicago, too. I saw their travel journey on on Twitter. Yeah, they had, they had the to pull over and seek uh, seek hotel shelter at some po at one point because it was just too too much to bear. Yeah, so lucky for them, everybody else got got stranded. Some of them got out, but whatever. So let's go. Let's keep going here. We got. Um, let's talk about. We're gonna. We just we touch on it a little bit. Let's talk about this Matt Cardona, hmm. Chelsea Green, and Joey Janela match because we we talked about it a little bit with Ricky, and now let's just go ahead and get. What's your thoughts on this one? Man? Ah, Matt Cardona. You, you're, like, a, you're a big Matt Cardona fan, it sounds like. No, so no. You talk anyway, right? No, I'm not a big <laughs> Matt Cardona fan. Uh, he's like, he's a parasite. He's a he's a leech. You know what I mean? And uh, he obviously has talent. He obviously has a lot going for him. But a lot of it is now he's leveraged, uh, kind of falling out of favor in popularity. He's leveraged GCW and, and its fan base to become more relevant than he's been since he won like the Intercontinental title. And again, tip of the cap to him. He's working the machine. He's working the media. He's working everybody. But sadly, he's also working himself. And not just because he measures his life success in terms of how many dolls and doll accessories he owns. But we've seen what what happened with Joey Janela and Chelsea Green. Do you know what I mean? Like it, it's obvious as as the nose on your face, or the beard on your face, or the glasses on your face that uh, you know what went on there. And you know we've we've heard things. So I you, see, so you I've, don't I've believe it was things. photoshopped. You're saying it wasn't photoshopped. No, those are real. Okay, definitely. Well, <laughs> did did you see of what? They are. Are. Of course they did, are. Did you see what happened today, or you know, recently by the time this airs? Uh, maybe. I don't know. Tell us. Well, 
one Matt Cardona was driving over to see his uh, associate Super Gabby uh, for an unsolicited uh, doll pickup for mm -hmm. his doll distribution network. And uh, Joey Janela encountered uh, and physically battered and bloodied Matt Cardona breaking thousands of dollars worth of dolls and uh, doll related accessories in the process. I did not see this. Yeah. Um, this just came out. Oh man. And uh yeah. Well those it's, that if there's one way to en enrage Matt Cardona, it might be breaking his toys. And to see it though, like uh my words cannot do justice to the the visual experience. It's like a it's like a, a movie of watching Matt Cardona get just about everything he deserves. And it just sets the tone even higher. You know what Matt Cardona tried to do to Ricky Morton is, is despicable. Matt Cardona is despicable. I think Chelsea Green could be possibly redeemed, um, you know, but she, especially since she has some bad boy mojo, but time will tell. Uh, my prediction, Joey Janela will destroy the so-called Cardona dynasty in Manhattan. Manhattan, New York City, a place Matt Cardona wishes he was from. Got to run in by my cat. He agrees with you. <laughs> my man Tyson. But no, I, I yeah, now it's, let's see, I see, yeah, I have to go look this up when we get done with this. Now that he's, Joey's uh, made it personal for, I mean, it was already personal, but now breaking his toys, man, that's, that's a blood feud now. So it was, it was extreme. That's awesome. Now I'll look that up. Ruby and Allie. Ooh. Now that's, an, that's a match. Like that one means a lot to Allie, I think. And that promo she cut in Chicago was very intense. Oh man. And yeah. Like the, the genius, the cinematic uh, wizard, John Carlo had made uh, a, just a mind blowing uh, video piece. I don't even know what the correct word to call it is a trailer, a short film, vignette. Uh, a vignette, uh, beautifully shot uh, with Allie catch uh, just kind of, spotlighting the match if you will and that and then her promo in like you said in uh chicago was just i could you know out of, out of this world the the passion the organic the sincerity the fire like everything about it and what the match means to her and ali catch the perennial underdog you know what i mean and, and there's ruby soho on on top of the the wrestling world and what Ruby Soho is meant to Ali catch as inspiration and it, it just all comes together, you know, uh, but this, you know, this time, the first time, uh, possibly the only time it happens on Ali catches turf. It's not Ali catch coming into some big place mm -hmm. to do something. It's, it's Ruby coming to some big place, GCW's place, entering the world on GCW and doing battle with one of GCW's best. So I'm a huge Ali catch fan. Uh, but truth be told, I'm a, a, a big fan and supporter of Ruby Soho. So uh, I just think it's, a wor again, world-class redefining redefining the standard for wrestling in short. Right. Yeah, that's going to be fun, man. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I love everything Allie does. She's probably the best. I'd say she's the best unsigned talent, not to one of the two or three. I agree. I, it's argument of whether or not you guys are three, you know, as far as like the ranking of companies in the country. But you know what I mean? What I mean by companies with made like a TV deal, basically, you know, there's sure. somebody that's not but signed to that company with a TV deal. You know how it is too, though, Cassidy, like I feel like there's two kinds of TV. There's companies mm -hmm. that have the benefit of television, such as uh, World Wrestling Entertainment or Elite Wrestling. Uh, you could say Ring of Honor. And then as you go on, sometimes there's almost like the burden of TV. Like you can uh, be locked into a format of having to produce all this stuff, but it, it, the storylines and things aren't necessarily resonating or the audience support isn't there. You know what I mean? Oh, I know um, exactly what you mean. But, uh, you know, oh, and I left impact out of that first list, but you know what I mean? Like there's, yeah. I think there's the benefit of television and then there's like the burden of television. If it's not something that's, if it's not putting massive amounts of money into your organization and it's not putting massive amount of people into the seats, but it takes up a massive amount of the time and focus and everything. I don't know. You know what I mean? I like no, it this I, way. I, I like it. I like what you guys are doing too. And I think like you said, it, it allows you a little bit more freedom too to do what you guys need to do without having the, 
it's almost a handcuff of being on TV to be yeah. like, well, does this, is this going to, is this okay? Does this meet what you, we can put out? Does, you know what I mean? Because somebody else is going to be having to clear whether or not it can get on their network. And, and, and we can seemingly anymore. break, we can seemingly break the television rule, which seems to, in, in many cases, be to leave the audience unhappy or whatever. We can, we can break that rule mm-hmm. flagrantly. And we also, the most of the thing, uh, really, though, is, the listening to the audience that that's the thing that that i think a lot of companies miss is listen to the audience they always say all that we have the world's largest focus group all you know all of wrestling does in terms of the audience is right there you listen to their response and you know who's who and what's what but sometimes it feels like certain places want to ignore that and just know it that's not it but listen if you listen Mm -hmm. to the people look what happens i think listening to the people is a big reason why GCW is in Hammerstein. You know what I mean? I agree, one hundred percent. And I, we've talked about it. like this. I'm gonna we're gonna I, I, I want to get I'll get back to the card in a second. But we're, since we're talking about the TV model, like I've talked to you you about this personally before. It's like you guys are doing what TNA kind of did better than they did. It's the same thing. It's a weekly um, because you're almost you're what forty shows now a year out of the fifty two weeks. So it's like you're almost weekly. You know, at least you're bi-weekly, if not if nothing else. Then, right. Uh, and it's the same It's the same model that TNA basically had, but you're doing it better for more money, too. And on the road, yeah, it, it's the, the nice price, so to speak. The shows are refreshingly inexpensive to mm-hmm. purchase on, on flight or, uh, in this case, on traditional uh, cable. And I think it's also the idea that uh, in the past, what we saw at TNA, their original concept, and then it was just running in the same building all the time. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I think it's bringing it on the road uh, is is a huge leap forward. And you see the huge. dividends because, you know, you're bringing this great stuff everywhere. You know what I mean? Instead of the you're, bringing great stuff to the same area. Yeah. And you're reaching people that it, it expands your audience regardless of what people want to say. Like, oh, you're being on the Internet, it audiences everybody. But not necessarily the same because if you can go to it, it changes your perception of a, of a company too. There's a lot of people that, you know, they don't really know what GCW is about just because they've heard about it, but yet they don't, and they need to see it for themselves and be there. hundred percent. Going to a show too is totally different than watching a show on, on, on your TV and everybody needs to experience what you guys put uh, the atmosphere you have live. It's, it's like nothing else. And I go to a lot of wrestling shows, man. I do same from, from the biggest you can go to to the smallest you can go to and what you guys do consistently is a feeling and atmosphere that nobody else can compete with honestly it's something incredible and special and everybody needs to go check that out i stand by that statement but and like you go places that nobody else does too like i had a conversation with one guy he's like man no wrestling comes out here and i knew right away i was like that's going to be a guy from wyoming and it ended up being a guy from Wyoming that talked about how the last time he, the only wrestling show he's ever been able to see was through you guys. And well, that's worked. incredible. And I hope we go, get to go back to Wyoming soon. That, that was so incredible to go to Laramie, Wyoming. And you know what I mean? To just yeah. do something that hadn't been done in decades and people turned out for it and people loved it and that, and people traveled to see it. And it mm-hmm. was a very, very unique experience in all in a good way. Yeah, and I think I think he was saying like I haven't been to being able to go to a live wrestling show in my state since like WCW or something like that, and that's shit, dude. That's almost thirty years now at this point, you know, and that's insane to think about because it would have been mid nineties when they were running that market too, you know. Right. So, I think there you know, might have been a WWE house show or something maybe in the very early two thousands because I remember I, I looked it up. But yeah, yeah either way, it either was way, su- that's super still long time crazy. and a long time in between. In between, yeah. So no, it's great that you guys are able to do that for people too. And that's one thing I like about what GCW is you, you are traveling all over the place and you're hitting these markets in different venue places that, you know, don't get wrestling all the time, especially in person, good wrestling in person. That's another thing to, to stress. hundred percent. And to get to see a, a, a variety of, of performers to be able to see, maybe there'll be something uh, really violent. Maybe there'll be something really high flying. Maybe there'll be something really technical. Maybe the, not even, maybe there will be, there will be, and it's all, this sonic stew of all different types and matches and that that's what makes it great you know what i mean it's it's like a circus you know there's uh, there's something for everybody in gcw encompasses that perfectly where it's like no matter what style of wrestling is really your taste there's going to be something there for you and And what i find is even if there's a type of wrestling that you think isn't to your Mm -hmm. taste when you're sitting there watching the best people in the world do it you're like yo i really now appreciate this 
Mm-hmm. Because That's maybe before get, you yeah. only watched it on tape, but now you're like, you know what I'm saying? Like you yeah. see, you see these guys like Jonathan Gresham, you know what I mean? Uh, Tony Depp and all these people mm-hmm. to see them perform their craft uh, in the room is, yeah, it, it's hard to put it into words how, how talented they are. No, and then I, many more, you know, I agree. Speaking of Gresham, let's just, that's a good segue. You guys are going to the ring of honor world title match at the Hammerstein ballroom, <laughs> which I mean, and, and Ian Riccoboni is going to be there to call that too. Right. Is Hell that yeah. The, and that's awesome. And you got Gresham versus your guy, Blake Christian, who, what a match that's going to be, dude. You yeah. guys have been setting that up over the last few weeks too. That looks, it's, that's going to be a, that's going to bring the house down, man. Yeah. Blake has been on a roll, man. Like uh, Blake Christian was always great since the time mm-hmm. I saw him debut at a uh, lights out for GCW in uh, Nashville, Tennessee, just came out of left field to me and was just like, holy shit, this guy is, you know, at, out of this world. And he had a great run in GCW. He took a few months off, got some additional polish and enhancement, mm-hmm. which I didn't even think he needed, but now you see it on him. And it's, it's incredible to see how just a little bit of time at that performance center, what it did to just polish him and just tighten everything of his game up. You know, everything from footwork to the, the, the facial expressions to just all these little things that you didn't even really notice before. But now it just like sets him just that much better than. Oh, yeah. Incredible. And, you know, we, we've seen him uh, in, in tagging with Alex Zane against the mm-hmm. Briscoes since he's been back. We've seen him going against Alex Zane. Uh, Who's another always... guy fresh off that performance center run who the same thing. It's just you didn't think before. It's like, man, this is a guy I don't, I don't you don't think needs any more like fine tuning and polishing. Sure. And you see him come back. You're like, oh, my God, that was just it's just awesome. And then yeah. uh, on the flip side, then you have Gresham, you know what I mean, who's just the standard bearer for technical wrestling. There's very, very few that can do it better than him, and no one's ever done it better than him in the ring at the same time during his reign as the Ring of Honor World Champion. So uh, there's a lot on the line. And for Blake Christian, I think it's so important because I think some people want to dismiss Blake Christian as like, oh, you know, he's a high-flying wrestler. He's a flippy wrestler. But – Blake Christian is a professional wrestler of, mm. of the highest caliber. So to put him into a pure rules match, I think kind of changes can can totally change the perception of him. And and to, if he can go all the way, if he can take out Gresham in a in a pure rules match and capture that Ring of Honor. So it is uh, a pure rule. I was going to ask. I didn't notice that it was pure rules match. I didn't have that noted down. So it is going to be under pure rules then. I certainly believe it to be. <laughs> That's going to be awesome. That's going to be awesome yeah it's something that's overlooked is his ability to do chain wrestling and just like good technical mat and ground wrestling that blake christian um, that's gonna be awesome that's gonna be yeah awesome. uh traditionally um uh, i know there was an exception made with two cold scorpio in chicago but traditionally mm-hmm. jonathan gresham only defends that title under pure rules and uh i i 100 believe that is how that's gonna be blake true. christian's gonna be going for it so that's really no matter what you're going to get a main event caliber steal the mm-hmm. show technical classic. And with what Blake Christian also brings to the table in terms of his high flying and versatility, he may take, or he will take, I'm sure a pure rules match to places it's never been. Yeah. And just Darby. If, if the, the, if the rules of too. gravity and the rules of physics don't apply to Blake Christian, you know what I mean? I'm sure he right. could find ways to be fluid around the rules and within the rules of a pure rules match. And just to have that title defended at the Hammerstein Ballroom just seems fitting too, you know, because that's such a that venue is synonymous with like Ring of Honor over the last absolutely 20, 20 years or so. Really, really, it's been one of the places that they've run regularly since they've been around. And and how great is it too, if I may, Cassidy, that the yeah. the spirit the spirit of pro wrestling allows companies like Ring of Honor, who have you know like they're part of a, a corporate structure and etc. And it allows companies like Ring of Honor to work with a company like Game Changer Wrestling to have these incredible opportunities, these dream match scenarios. And Ring of Honor will be back very soon. Do you know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's a great way to keep fans engaged and connected with the idea that Ring of Honor hasn't gone anywhere. And um, I'd love to see more of this type of type of crossover, like you've seen right. it with the Briscoes as well, who hold mm-hmm. the Ring of Honor belts and the Game Changer Wrestling belts at the same time. You know, and they show up with with both of those belts a game changer and i'd love to see them show up with with that hardware at ring of honor or wherever the briscoes show up everywhere the briscoes show up yeah well speaking of the briscoes they've got an open challenge that's next on my list for hammerstein and 
that's all. Open challenges are always fun, especially thinking about all the what ifs. And there's a lot of those possibilities and scenarios that are running right now, especially with what they've been involved in and stuff with uh, in other companies recently. So what do you sure. think? What do you think about that? Where, where, what would you like to see if it was, oh. if you could dream book your own scenario for the open challenge, what do you want to have to see happen here? Ah, that, that's a, that's hard for me to answer. Like there's so many, uh, there's so many talent uh, announced for the show and signed for the show that don't, as you said earlier, have matches assigned. And there's a lot of t so much talent there. And, in terms of teams and potential teams and etc multiplied by the wild card factor of what if it's someone that's not even on the show do you know what i mean or i i just i <laughs> i'll be damned if i have any idea who is going to answer that challenge uh you, you know what i'm saying yeah i was worth the shot seeing if i could get a little inside baseball job <laughs> twist my arm yeah <laughs> but no that's always fun and like you said there could be anybody they've set up feuds with uh like we saw in Ring of Honor with FTR, and they've engaged that on Twitter. So that's always people 100%. been people been rumoring, rumoring, making that rumor this week do the rounds. And then, I mean, there's, there's who knows the Briscoes. Are, Briscoes again. This building is going to be fun to see too. It's going to be awesome because oh like, man, that, that crowd's going to just explode for them, and you know they're going to beat the shit out of somebody all over that building. And the, the Briscoes are so so talented. It's hard to even put into words how great they are and the honor that I've had in calling their, their last few matches in GCW, uh, it just watch, just seeing their presence in the room, seeing their stuff on the monitor and in the screen and, or in the ring and how people respond to it. It's yeah, it's really beyond words. There's, I don't know that there's a team in the business that can touch them quite frankly. So regardless of who answers that, that challenge, I'm not sure if whoever it is, can even slow down the Briscoes right now because they're like a, a locomotive. Yeah. It doesn't matter who answers the challenge. It's going to be probably one of the best matches on the card. You know, a little bit. Yeah, one of the best matches of the year, and it's still and, early. It's only January. Yeah. And like I said the other night, like there's uh, – I guarantee – Columbus guarantee Jay Briscoe is going to bleed at some point because Jay Briscoe bleeds all the time on – and Jay, I don't think I've seen him not bleed. I think for you guys, every time I shows up, he probably just bleeds doing a run. I'm surprised he didn't bleed in Atlantic City that one night just doing the stare down. He also, <laughs> Stuff yeah. happens. Maybe if there was yeah. a headbutt a head thrown or a knuckle at a particular angle. Uh, but yeah, he might so that, be susceptible to uh, to leaking, but he's not susceptible to losing. Not not in uh, not a recent memory. Not even always to his own brother. Uh, I can't wait for that one, man. I uh, I really I, uh, Emil and I had talked about this, I guess, and. So you were there as we were in uh, Queens in New York. He had said that we were, he was fantasy booking matches that he wanted to see the Briscoes do. And then a month later, here they are in your company and he was just losing his shit. He's like, Oh my God, everything we've talked about has almost happened. So yeah, yeah I can't wait, man. It's just crazy. Yeah. Just to think about that response when you hear their music <sighs> hit and they're, they're like two maniacs, you know what I mean? Like they just come through that curtain. Their charisma is larger than life. They look like something not from this world. And their in ring is literally unparalleled, man. If they were born uh, in an earlier time, they would have been contemporaries or oh, on top of the Road Warriors and and everyone else. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like they're yeah. that good, Hall of Fame level. Yeah, they're easily one of the best tag, if not the best. You can't argue that they're not one of the best tag teams in the entire world. And sure, you know, I know the time. FTR have a hashtag campaign or whatever in the past, mm -hmm. but I think the Briscoes, they don't even know what a hashtag is. And they, 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 don't, they don't need to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Yes. <laughs> so Correct. No, I, it's two, uh, two totally different philosophies. And if, <laughs> if that was, if that match is ever to come to pass, be it in GCW with the Hammerstein or anywhere, my money's on the Briscoes. Yeah. I, I you're not going to catch me saying one there because my butt I'm, I'm from Asheville, so I can't talk shit about my boys. They'll, they'll they won't be happy with me. But I mean, that's they're a very, I very, very, very talented duo. But you know what I'm saying? Them boys are coming into your see. house too. It'd be different. But FTR, whoever it might be, I can think of a lot of people that might be. Uh, so yeah. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be sitting there at the monitor with my eyes glued to it. I'm going to be a little sad that I'm going to have to go back and listen to it later on to hear your reaction. <laughs> stuff. I'm going to be at the ring. Or I might be trying to do this on my phone with a little headset in or something. Yeah, yeah, do the, do so the Fight hear. TV live stream. <laughs> yeah, I want to be able to hear what's going on because I want to hear your reaction to stuff. But 
Another one, the big one, uh, I was wondering if this was going to get announced, was the GCW world title match between Moxley and Homicide. That's Oh, my God. Holy shit. What a weekend for Homicide, huh? Man, for Homicide to win that Rumble, you know, it came down to, it was all for that number one spot, that number one contendership, and it came down to Atticus Koger and, and, uh, and Homicide. And in the end, you know what I'm Man. saying, Ex- experience proved the, uh, the essential ingredient. Homicide got that crucial win. And to think about it, uh, the return of John Moxley to professional wrestling with his uh, Game Changer Wrestling uh, World Championship in tow and to put it on the line against someone that he has such a, a history with in, and then in such hallowed halls on such an important show. Um, thank you, John Moxley. Thank you, Homicide, because they, those are two guys that. Oh, we hiccuped again. We'll get you back. KJ, I think I lost you, buddy. There you go. Well, I was saying, uh, thank you, th- Homicide. Uh, the last thing was just thank you, Homicide. So thank you, John Moxley. Thank you, Homicide, because without those guys, independent <laughs> wrestling wouldn't be where, where it is today, uh, without a doubt, without a question. And and to have them on the top of this card uh, just means a lot to me. I think it means a lot to everyone in GCW, and it should mean a lot to everyone in wrestling because – these are two guys that that carried independent wrestling on, on their back for a lot of years and to have them be able to do battle at this magnitude at this level with uh without restrictions so to speak uh yeah i i just can't wait the the, the possibilities are endless and uh, who deserves it more than homicide obviously atticus kogar uh would say that he deserves it more um he's, he's but been, he's been putting some stuff out on social media today i need to look at it. i saw you put oh a my video god out. dude yeah i, I I I I I have no comment, <laughs> but I would just recommend that you watch it. Yeah, it's on, I was looking at it before we started. I was like, I need to check that out, uh, but I didn't get around mm-hmm. to it yet. But it's on my uh, it's on my queue there, in my of my list of things to look at today before I get get too far. Not out. not good. Yeah, I mean it's well done, but not good. <laughs> that's all. I mean, you you meant you touched on it there a little bit too. Uh, what homicide means to wrestling? That's pro- that's why he's being inducted into the. Uh, hall of fame the night before and it's just a huge weekend for him man i mean he's going into the independent wrestling hall of fame and then the next night he headlines main events this gcw hammerstein show for you guys and what if i mean what if he comes out winner what a weekend that would be to see oh my god and this is this is following one of my fondest memories is uh pre in a pre-pandemic world we did a tribute to homicide and sold out a villain in brooklyn and had an amazing night of incredible talent all connected to you know and and loved by uh homicide and that that was such an incredible just the the thread of homicide through game changer wrestling goes way back and obviously his thread is like part of the backbone of independent wrestling itself so yeah it's just humbling to it's, it's humbling to even be a part of the same the same production as as people of that uh of that magnitude you know yeah no it's it's a it's gonna be a big weekend for him. I can't I can't wait to see what happens. I'm a huge homicide fan, always have been. So this is it's it's awesome. And now we haven't even barely we still got some other stuff we haven't even touched on. There's a couple of matches that look like they're gonna happen, but they haven't been announced yet. Uh new extreme champion, you guys, he won over PCO, uh AJ Gray issued that challenge for Kingston. And Eddie said, uh what did he say that he if he's cleared, he'll be there? Was that what he said, I think? Something of that nature. Uh, yeah, I know what I, I can say. What you stated factually, AJ Gray captured that title, uh, which mm-hmm. was incredible, defeating PCO, and he issued a, a very pointed challenge to Eddie Kingston. But from that point on, we'll see. I, that man, that if they do get a lockup, that's gonna be that's gonna be something, man. Holy and shit. AJ Gray, so 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 talented. You know, I, I got another like a true outlaw, someone who who fought from underneath and was able to just step up, step onto the a big platform like it was no thing and stand and deliver. And, uh, you know, he's someone who believes in himself very strongly and you can see how it carries through in, into his wrestling because nobody does it like <clears throat> A.J. Gray, one of the hardest hitters in the game. And I can attest to that. The potential. It. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah, you experienced God, it. dude, he chopped me into, turned me into a video game character, bro. He, he's so hard. I, I turned into King Hippo, bro. I flew 10 <laughs> feet back. God, yeah, anybody that's, yeah, anybody that questions how hard he hits, I'm like, dude, I 
he chopped my soul out of me. It's insane how hard that guy hits. I hope I hope Eddie Kingston uh, accepts the challenge or whatever. If there's any hurdles in the way or whatever it is, because that that's an absolute uh, a dream match on a night of dream matches and a and a kickoff show of a kickoff event of dream matches. Yeah, Eddie, that'd be a, an awesome thing to see him at that building too. Just because he's <laughs> you know New Yorker man, and I got to watch him wrestle Janela the other night at uh, for Dark. Um, AEW was that in Charlotte or Raleigh? I don't remember which one it was. Yeah, but uh, that match was awesome. They, they they tore it down, man. Two of the greats, so, man. Yeah, and uh, so what do you uh, AJ or Jarrett and F and Effie? That match mm -hmm. it looks like it needs to happen. I mean, you saw what happened this weekend. You were that, there. That was horrific. Uh, Jeff Four Jarrett epic. is someone that uh, I had a, a so much respect uh love admiration all that stuff for jeff jarrett uh for a lot of years and uh to see what he did uh to effie was bad enough uh to see him show up when effie's not around and attack ali catch in that way it, it's it's and and without even a why like what is going on like why why are you doing this shit you know what i mean so it's i'm my opinion of Jeff Jarrett is obviously his his stock with me has has plummeted, and I think we're at the very least we're owed an explanation or an understanding of his actions. Um, last I heard from Effie, you know, via social media and etc., was he he's made it very clear that he wasn't interested in having a match with Jeff Jarrett. He called Jeff Jarrett a like a clout vampire, like seeking mm -hmm. indie wrestling blood to sustain and reinvent himself, and that. That Effie's not interested in, in being a part of it. Um, yeah, I yeah. Think the, he said mosquitoes get mosquitoes get smacked. You said that too. The other wow. Day, so, yeah. So we yeah, what what ends up happening? I'm I'm not sure, but Jeff Jarrett is begging for it. You know what I mean? And and uh, if assaulting Effie and assaulting people that Effie loves isn't a way to get Effie's attention, I, I don't know what is. But I do know that I don't think Jeff Jeff, Jeff Jarrett or Jeffy or, as or, he's known or a uh, Joey Jarrett. If you watch that video that Effie posted, where he was <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if uh, if Jeffy knows what he's in for because if you open the door into the the dark side of Effie, man, you're gonna be quite fucking shocked at what you get as a result. Uh, yeah, I agree don't with poke you the there. Effie with the stick because you're no. gonna get it. No, that's a. Uh... Yeah, I, I'll be interested to see what happens there. If nothing else, we'll at least get some words, I, I feel like, uh, next Sunday on that. Situation. I would hope so. But uh, Jeff Jarrett's got something coming to him. I, I, I'm not a person that's in a position to deliver it, but Effie might be. Yeah. Effie is if he chooses to, but Effie is fine. Effie is fine. That's the that's the main message I got from everything is Effie yeah. is still fine. That, that's really the main message of this uh, Bodyslam.net interview mm -hmm. exclusive is – Effie is fine. Effie is fine. Jeff, Jeff Jarrett this. Effie is fine. What about the guitar? Effie is fine. is fine. And that's and that makes me sleep better at night, honestly. Yeah, it's, absolutely. Yeah. It's good just to think about it. If you're having a bad day, you feel a little anxious or whatever, just take a moment and just reflect. You know what? Effie's fine. And, and you should Effie's be fine, fine, too. Amen. There you go. We're, we're all connected. It's one uh, connected nervous system. And Effie is our conduit. Mm -hmm. Effie is a vessel. He's a vessel. That's exactly where I was going with that. You beat me to it. But man, yeah, that that's we've ran down the card. Now, one thing I love about GCW, and I want to touch on this before we go, is the the their ability to bring in names and people for nostalgia pops and get just incredible things out of them. Like you saw with Scotty Too Hotty uh, mm. recently and things like that. How amazing was that match a couple weeks ago? I wanted to talk to you about that before we go too unreal man just so so unreal i got to work with scotty tuhati uh on i guess his what was his second to last indie appearance before his uh i i forget how many years away it was six six years um i got to work with him on that on that match in a you know in a supporting role and then it was just so wild to then go into the dressing room and and it reintroduced myself to him and uh and he was so excited. Like, one, he looked so fucking ready. Like, he was ready for, like, a photo shoot or the ring, like, as soon as I got to the building. Like, pumped and warmed up and ready. But it meant so much to him to be there. Do you know what I mean? And, like, he he was very aware of everything. Meaning, like, he knew what it meant. He knew where he was. And he knew what was going to be done. You know what I mean? And uh, 
That's and exactly. man, did him and Joey Janela deliver an absolute masterpiece. And even if you're someone who is a, a work rate wrestling fan, and you just say, oh, whatever, Scotty too hottie, he's like a gimmick wrestler or a, a, a joke wrestler or something. Watch Scotty too hottie versus Joey Janela. And again, open your mind to the true art form of professional wrestling because those guys delivered a five star classic. And if you include the post match comments by Scotty, it's a six star match. They had the crowd like erupting and eating out of their hand before they even touched each other, just with the glasses. Spot. And that's <laughs> that sums up how wrestling that's the most wrestling thing in the world is like just the, the crowd going nuts for just the possibility of their switching glasses. Yes, and the anticipation of the, and anticipation, the ultimate climax oh. of the yeah. oh, <laughs> and that, that's that shows you how good of a wrestler he is because like he can work to be able to work the crowd like that is just it's not everybody can do it man yeah and he's yeah. he's a true great has so much to offer wrestling and following that uh you know high profile return to wrestling now he's been booked everywhere appearing mm -hmm. everywhere and I, I and i know he's available for bookings he's available for seminars and uh he's someone that any aspiring wrestler or you know light to moderately or even seasoned independent wrestler could learn a lot from because the dude's got got it all, especially yeah. in the cranium. And that's just what I love. One thing I love the most about GCW is just you guys. It's like, who are you guys going to do that for next? Like, who are you guys going to bring in that somebody's like, oh, I never even thought I wanted to see this match. And then it's on paper. And then it's going to be even better than you expected. Is yeah, I feel like that. that's part of the secret sauce of GCW yeah. in a way. It's like it's a never ending string of dream matches you never knew you wanted. And then... It's not even like, oh, well, the announcement of it sounds dope, but in execution, it wasn't really too good. Like, it's like, oh, my God, I can't believe this is happening. And then when it happened, you're like, oh, it my was, God, this is like. Yeah, it blew me away. It, it went above and beyond my expectations. It was everything I hoped for it would, could be and more. And that's just, it's amazing that you guys are able to do that so consistently and just always have. Is there somebody that you, that's fantasy book, who, name a name somebody that you would really love to see come into GCW, like an old timer that people wouldn't expect, or just somebody just for something like, you know, like like a Scotty Too Hottie, like somebody. Oh, and to actually wrestle love. a match. Yeah. And is does it should be based on the fact that they could actually like physically yeah. have a match yeah, today? Yeah, yeah. yeah, like it's it's like it's actually possible, something that you would like to see happen, because Emma and I have talked about this many a night, and like, I think we touched on a little bit in our, like, almost two hours that we did is like possible fan like dream scenarios but yeah like who would you love to see come through the gcw doors and work work a program with somebody you know uh off the top of my head and and maybe it's the hammerstein infusion and someone who i saw wrestle there many times but maybe maybe it's rob van dam oh, that'd be incredible right and what is there a, a wrestling company that's more perfect for rob van dam too than right. game changer wrestling really a million percent. Uh, he's a, a you know an insanely innovative talent, uh, unsung hero of you know revolutionizing wrestling, and a, a cool dude, a, a smart businessman. You know his CBD products are legendary. So, uh, yeah, to me, Rob Van Dam comes to mind. I mean, there, there's obviously others, but he he just pops to mind because yeah. he's one of my favorites, and I have this Legends of ECW signed print here on the opposite side of the camera. That's awesome. So I'm I looking at some of the greats. Yeah, he's he's one of my favorites of all time too. I, I I have fond memories of seeing him do some crazy shit in ECW rings when I was a kid. That I'm same, yeah, big same. There's I'm always I always want to manifest this. I've told you I I want to see George South come through. Your I want to see him walk through the GCW curtain and have the crowd just sing and journey. Is this something I can't I can't get out of my mind i, I'm I hope that, that into uh, existence i hope that gcw comes to north carolina soon uh and i hope that if we do get to come to north carolina soon you i, I for, for whatever my input is worth i will certainly make a written a verbal and a facebook messaged uh, recommendation that's, spread out over a 12 hour period one that's good one enough for me each, buddy just to put the <laughs> multi-germination of seed i'll throw it in there because oh, I, I, I I agree. I would love to see that. And yeah, his match with Colby Carino God. was legendary. And uh, yeah, what what can we say? And that's another guy, Colby, that I, I absolutely love that he's getting to shine and getting some work for you guys. Because like I've known Colby for so many years, man. Like since 
He's a North Carolina guy. I know him since he was first running around with everybody 10 years or more ago. So to see him on your, on your stage is something I really, really, really love to see happen. Yeah. He's, he's amazing. I've known him since he was, seems like since he's a little kid, cause he was around wrestling since he was mm -hmm. a little kid and even doing angles and programs and matches and everything. And uh, to see him grow from a kid to a, you know, a, a responsible man and with a great family and a great career ahead of him. It's been, it's been great, great to just to watch and, uh, anytime he's in or around GCW, uh, I'm thrilled to see him. Yeah, Colby's an awesome guy, man. I, I, I hope he's there next week, and I think I think he is. I'm not positive. I think I talked to him in, the other day, and he said he might be in the area. I'm not, I don't remember. I can't keep track, man. Everybody, too much stuff going on. Right. Everybody's somewhere sometime. Next weekend, man. We're, like I said, we are now six days out. I think this will probably go up tonight or tomorrow morning. So it'll be okay. six, five days away from Hammerstein. Man, is there anything else you want to – hype up and tell everybody before we call this a day man because we've covered pretty much everything and let's just i'm excited i don't even know what else to say <laughs> i know this, man oh man it's crazy yeah all i can say is get down there early make sure you're in your seat for 7 p.m uh please support game changer wrestling our patreon is a great way to support it mm -hmm. and without our great patreon supporters i don't know where we would be today or if we would be at hammerstein or anywhere else so it's patreon.com slash game changer wrestling uh, Brett Lauderdale, the elusive Brett Lauderdale, and the press, uh, not press resistance, but uh, a man that's very difficult to get on camera or on mic. Uh, he sits down with me a few times a month and we take questions uh, from our patrons at length. Uh, that's one of our shows. That's the official GCW podcast. We have the World of Deathmatch. We have exclusive video content, um, early access to tickets, uh, exclusive merch drops, on and on and on, but a really great way to support GCW is through that patreon.com slash game changer wrestling. And of course, GCW merch.com. If you just want to pick up some stuff there and support so you can be all swagged out and dressed to the nines when you're watching along at home or when GCW comes to your area, uh, give me a follow on social media at OG Kevin Gill on Twitter and Instagram. You could also find me on Facebook. And uh, I just want to say for me as a, someone who grew up in Queens, New York and the you know the the mecca of professional wrestling being Madison Square Garden and a place I could go make pilgrimages to uh, uh, as you know and then as I got older Hammerstein and places like that but as a New Yorker to be in a room like that and uh, that's a room that uh, you know I've never obviously wor worked in that room before so to to be there on the other side of the railing to be on the commentary team for live cable broadcast for live broadcast on fight is definitely a, a career defining moment for me. So it means a lot on a lot of levels to be in my hometown uh, for GCW for the most important independent wrestling event of our lifetimes to date. Dude, it's going to be something else. I can't, I absolutely can't wait. And I'm, it, I'm thrilled to be, be able to go be a part of this with you guys, man. Cause like I've gotten to, gotten to know you pretty well over the last couple months, six months or so. And it just, it's awesome to see where you guys have, where you guys are going and just to be just to, you guys to be there is just awesome and I, I can't wait for you guys it's so big of a it's huge i can't even put into words how big this is because it's <laughs> it's hard to, it's hard to explain to somebody who doesn't realize in the wrestling the 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 big the picture of wrestling how big of a deal this is you know a hundred percent uh and, it's also things I, and think about that and that's coming a handful of days after drawing an incredible crowd to the legendary harpos in detroit and drawing a, a huge crowd in uh, Hoffman Estates, Illinois, just outside Chicago, it's crazy momentum. Like you would think some people would say, oh, well, we have a big show coming up at the end of January, so we're not going to do any shows before it because the big show's coming up. No. Uh-oh. One more hiccup, but that's all right. The big show's coming up. That's where we stop that. So when you pop back in, we'll get you going. A little bit of a glitch there. At least you got a good freeze on your – there we oh, here we come. There we go. Last thing we, we got there was you were talking about a uh, big show coming up. Most people don't uh, – Oh, yeah. They would maybe say we have a big show coming up. Let's not run any events between now and then. But <clears> – <throat> damn. <laughs> but, uh, but GCW saw an opportunity to let's have these massive events to just build this – buzz and build this awareness and make the road to Hammerstein mean something. It's been a legendary string of shows, even preceding this weekend on that road, starting really with, did it start on uh, New Year's Eve, on New Year's Day, whatever you want to call it, that road to Hammerstein has been long. 
and that now it's almost here and yeah words can't put it into justice and uh thank you to game changer wrestling for making it all happen and, and for the fans that make it happen and for people like you cassidy that give us a platform to promote it and, and spread the word and let people know like uh, it's okay to join in. Like in other words, no one's gonna say, "Oh, you just started watching it now. You're not cool." Uh, Tony yeah, Deppin may may be the gatekeeper in the ring, but there's no gatekeeping at GCW. Like all are welcome, all are equal. You know what I'm saying? Let's yeah, fucking it, go. <laughs> and it's it's an environment. It's a very inclusive and very welcoming environment all around. Even the, from the fans to, like you said, you guys. Every, you got it's a it's a family. Every, you guys are like a wrestling family. It's it's something special, man. And I love uh, I love what you guys are doing. I'm super excited for next weekend, and we're gonna have a lot more of these uh, interviews with GCW personalities, wrestlers uh, this week coming out, uh, leading up to this weekend's big event. KG, thank you again so much, man, and thank I, I can't thank Game Changer enough for doing this because it's a, it's great what you guys are doing. You're giving more wrestling to to us fans, the people that love wrestling, and it's just uh, it's really special. And I can't thank you enough for what you guys do, man. So well, thank you, brother. And like I said, it's the the love that you and and everyone watching and and everything gives us. It gives us the energy to give it all back. It's a self multiplying philosophy. Like without the other, there's not the first one. Or without the, you know what I'm saying? You have to have both parts mm -hmm. of it. Otherwise, it's not there. So uh, we'll always do our part, and we appreciate everyone that that's there for us because you you all truly make it possible. Well, man, thank you so much for doing this. And guys, keep sticking with us all week. Um, you can follow us all on bodyslam.net. On Go to the website, bodyslam.net. We'll have wrestling news, results, uh, podcasts dropping all week. You can follow me on Twitter right here. It's at Casshole with three O's, C-A-S-S-H-O-O-O-L-E. Uh, follow bodyslam.net on social media too. It's at bodyslam.net. You get us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, pretty much anything. Just search for us. And if you're not, uh, haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, you should be doing so because we got a lot of good stuff coming out this week. Tons more GCW content leading up to this weekend's big show. So, guys, give us a subscribe. Give us this video a thumbs up. Help us out. KG, again, thanks, man. Appreciate it. I'm going to do this awkward ending because I don't really know how to close things. So.